Amen. So, what was the message of the angels? A Savior was born. He's going to reign as King. And the third part of that message is this. It's all for the glory of God. It's not for the glory of man. It's for the glory of God. Now, I want you to imagine that you're a shepherd. You know, shepherding must have been pretty quiet in the middle of the night. They were looking out over their flocks. and a Nice, quiet, peaceful night there in Bethlehem. And you know, probably taking turns, making sure no predator was coming. All was silent, all was still. And I wonder what the angels must have thought when they got to the place where God had sent them. I don't know how it went. Did the Lord tell them you're going to, you know, give this to angels? Or did he say, you go to this geographical spot and just, you know, let the message out? I wonder if they got there and thought, wow, you know, this great announcement just for just a few shepherds? I don't know what they thought. But they were faithful in giving the message because the scripture says, Luke 2, I think we already read it, says, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. The glory of the angel or the glory of the Lord? The glory of God. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. I, I like the King James Version there. I think it says sore afraid. S-O-R-E. Man, that's really afraid, you know. Uh, it was, that, that was something that was terrifying to these simple men. To experience the glory of God. And if you've ever studied the Old Testament, you realize that scarcely would people experience the glory of God and, and live to tell about it. I mean, it's an incredible thing to experience the glory of God. Uh, even Moses said to the Lord, I, I want to see it. How many of you know Moses was his friend, God's friend? But God said, Moses, okay, you climb up over there. Get that, that little cleft in that rock right there. I'm going to put my hand over you, and I'm going to pass by, and I'm going to let you see just a little bit of my glory. The Scripture says here that the glory of the Lord showed round about them, and, and, and that must have been an incredible thing. Why? Because God is perfectly holy, and His splendor is incredible. One theologian describes this type of glory as the manifested presence of God, often displayed in dazzling magnificence. It is, it is His character, His attributes expressed. It is His weight, His inestimable worth revealed in creation. The glory of God refers first and foremost to the sheer weight of the reality of His presence. Now, they didn't experience the glory of an angel. It was the glory of God. And the angels had carried that glory right from the very throne room of God, right with them. And God poured out His glory that night. And their reaction was that they were very afraid. They, they didn't know really what to think. And then if that wasn't enough, when the angel gave that message, suddenly the sky is filled with this angelic choir. And I don't think it was a choir like of 20 or 50 or a couple hundred. It was multitudes. Can you imagine what that must have been like? Luke 2, 13 says, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. How many of you think that wasn't a quiet night out in the shepherd pasture? Come on. That must have been an incredible night. All those angels praising God, singing, worshiping. And, and then the message was very clear. Glory to God in the highest. In other words, this is not about you. This is not about you, shepherds. This is about the glory that God is going to receive. And then he gave the second part. He said in on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. You know, those shepherds really experienced a bit of the grace of God that night. Because they experienced the glory of God and, and lived to tell about it. They received the announcement that a Savior had been born. They received how to find Him, where He was, how to recognize Him. That He would be a baby in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. And it was all for God's glory. I looked up the definition of glory kind of in a secular tense, in a secular sense. It means one of high renown or honor, one by notable achievements. High renown or honor, one by notable achievements. It means magnificence and beauty. How many of you think that Jesus is beautiful? Come on. 
He's magnificent. Glory to God in the highest and goodwill towards men encompasses everything that Jesus was, everything that he does right now, and everything that he is going to become. Come on. And let's just talk about a few of Jesus' notable achievements today. Come on. He defeated sin and lived a perfect sin-free life. Come on. He obeyed His Father down to the every last detail. He defeated Satan, cured all manner of sickness and disease, defeated death, hell, and the grave, bruised Satan's head, and the best thing of all, He purchased salvation for all mankind. And that, let me tell you, that's all for the glory of God. You say, how is that for the glory of God? Here's how it's for the glory of God. Because whenever somebody comes comes to the Lord and they say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need your help. I need your grace. I need to be set free. I'm struggling today. I'm hurting today. And God comes down and he touches them and he saves them and redeems them and changes them and transforms them. Let me tell you what happens. The renown of King Jesus gets made known all around the earth. It's all for his glory. It's all for his praise. It's all for the glory of almighty God. God's will. Amen. It says peace on earth and goodwill toward men. You know, we think of peace on earth. A lot of people think well, Christmas is all about wars ending. Well, let me tell you, the wars are going to end when King Jesus returns. I've just got news for you. There's going to be a thousand years of peace and prosperity. So in a sense, it, it, it is about that. But, 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 but there's a greater peace that we can have. It's about having peace with God. You see, mankind is in this struggle, and you see it everywhere you look. In fact, yesterday, Cedric and I, we were having lunch, and he was sharing with me a few things that, that he thought about what were going, was going on in the world and the way the world is and the wickedness and the evil of the world. And I was thinking about that today, and I thought to myself, you know, that's a struggle because, you see, men don't have peace with God. Men are fighting against God. Men want their own way. Men want to do what they want to do. And so there's this struggle on the earth. But let me tell you something. Jesus was born so that, 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 that men could have peace with God. And it's the best thing in the world when you finally say, Lord, okay, you're the king, I'm the servant. Amen. You're the savior, I'm the sinner. You're the boss, and I am the one that's going to follow you. You're my savior, you're my Lord. Let me tell you what happens. You get peace with God. You can lay your head down on the bed at night and not worry. Come on. And beyond that, not only do you get the peace with God, you get the peace of God. The peace of God. <laughs> the peace of God goes beyond what uh, the world can give. In fact, Jesus told his disciples, he said, my peace I give unto you. Not like the world gives you. You know, the world goes, peace, man. Hey, peace, come on, peace. That's the way the world gives you peace. Don't, don't help. Oh, it's this way? I don't know how to do it right. I'm, I'm out of it. Look, man, I'm a child of the 70s. We give peace this way. Hello. Y'all might have flipped it around like that. We give it this way. Peace, man. Peace out. Okay. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Jesus doesn't give that peace. Jesus gives peace and it's going to stay. Say, man, not peace out, peace and it's going to stay. Thank you for helping me preach this morning. Peace and it's going to stay. Hello? Amen. That means even when the world's crumbling, even when everything around you is falling apart, even when things don't look good, even when it looks like you got no money and it's Christmas and you're struggling and you're... Let me tell you something. You can have the peace of God that goes beyond understanding. Amen. That's the most glorious peace that there is. The peace of God. It's a sense of well-being. And when you have that peace with God and the peace of God, here's what happens. Eventually, you wind up having peace with others, with your family, peace with those that offended you, peace with those who hurt you. I love that there's a biblical illustration of this when in Luke chapter 7, a powerful story of a woman who was a great sinner. We don't know too much about her, but she came and she washed Jesus' feet with her tears and dried his feet with her hair. And Jesus looked at her and he said, your sins are forgiven. How many of those are the most wonderful words in the world? I'm so grateful our sins are forgiven. Come on. And then he said this to her, and I've never noticed this before in Scripture. 
It's in, it's, he, said, he said in Luke 7 and verse 50, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Go in peace. Jesus said, the, the angels declared, Jesus came to give peace with God. And here, Jesus gave this woman peace. She had peace with God. She had peace of God. Amen. Amen. And that's a beautiful illustration. Would you stand with me today? Thank you for letting me preach. I've just been...